In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the last day of June, which is today, June 30th, and we're going to be taking an extended look into July. Now, I do need to tell you about my business prestige weather. Keep in mind that we are releasing the July forecast officially on the channel tomorrow, so you can look out for that. But we are releasing an early release, or it already is released, actually, the early release of the fall forecast that is on prestige weather that you guys can check out the early access for which won't be out for like another week or so so go ahead and check that out i did want to mention to you guys my new business prestige weather has been doing so well so many of you have been joining and it's just been great to be able to share extra weather knowledge with you guys you can find that in the pinned comment and description down below we just did an early release of our actual july forecast so that goes for the temperature precipitation and overall forecast we released that early in there for our premium members. So if you want to gain access to that and everything we're talking about today uh, and get clear, concise information early on about what my forecast is for July, be sure to join in the description and pinned comment down below. We have that information for you guys down there where you can join today. It's only $5 a month, very affordable about the same price as a cup of coffee, uh, definitely going to be worthwhile. We also deliver forecasts directly to you. We're calling you guys once a week for limited time at least. We're thinking about releasing it permanently, but we're going to be calling you guys once a week if you like, of course, uh, to give you guys a forecast for anywhere that you might be located. So if you are located in the middle of nowhere, we will still give you a call. We'll still get the weather information for you and give you a look at the week ahead one-on-one -on -one directly to you. So it's really, really cool. Be sure to check it out again in the description and pinned comment down below. Now we're taking a look at the last 30 days, which now actually is officially the entirety of the summer thus far. And as you can see, colder temperatures along the Eastern seaboard has been the trend. Same thing for the Southwest into a lot of the Rockies and four corner states there. Those have been our two cooler areas and the East has been just really, really cold, especially compared to the last 10 or so summers. But not only that, historically, it is on pace to be one of the coldest that we've had. We can see that the North Central United States, that includes the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, into the Great Lakes have been above normal. So these areas have probably been wondering why I would ever say that the summer has been cold, because it's been quite warm for you guys. Uh, and I do get a lot of comments like that, specifically from these areas up here. And I've been getting a lot of comments like that from these areas down here in New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, where things have also been, compared to normal, very, very warm. So to you guys, you're probably wondering, what, where in the world is it cold uh, this summer? But for the East, I mean, it has been very strangely cold, and I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys. You know, when I make a video about some of the warmth in the central United States and you're confused why it's warm anywhere. So I hope that people can watch, you know, a couple of minutes into the video before commenting at least and kind of understand that there is different temperature air masses that have set up over different areas. Mostly cold here, mostly warm here, mostly warm here as well, and then mostly cold here. So it's highly, highly going to be dependent on where you're located. Keep that in mind. Now, as we move in to our upcoming pattern, I want to talk about the weather upcoming. And later on today, we will be dealing with just some scattered about thunderstorms throughout a lot of these corridors here. The flow in general is something like this, kind of ascending from the, from the west and, and moving around this kind of warmer, more dry air mass that we have set up over here. So you can imagine that is kind of a bubble that all of this is rolling over. We did have the beginning of, and this is one of those weather things that's time dependent, so it's not quite yet there, but it, the beginning of a squall line that looked a lot like a derecho, the conditions were very, very much on par with a derecho. It's just that the amount of distance that that has to travel and the amount of time that it has to take uh, causing a certain amount of wind damage every step of the way to be officially a derecho is still up for debate and still in question. But as of now, uh, a very, very strong wind-driven severe weather event has been taking place across the Ohio Valley. So I hope everybody is doing okay. I saw a lot of flattened crops. I saw a lot of power outages. I saw a lot of damage from that very intense wind, straight line wind damage that we had with that event. So obviously I hope everybody's doing okay. Minimum damage. Um, I, I just hope everything's doing okay because that's one of those very scary weather events that can be very, very damaging to a wide swath of folks too. You know, it doesn't really let up. It just kind of affects everybody in its path. So definitely one of those 
a much more impactful weather phenomenon that we deal with here, especially in the United States. And the weather associated with this for tomorrow on Saturday, the 1st, uh, we are going to see thunderstorms throughout the Ohio Valley again, down through some of the plains as well, like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. And then extending all the way up to the northeast, we also have these storms ongoing. Now, as we reach into the second, we can see the storminess moves further eastward and a little bit more widespread here through the Ohio Valley into the northeast. There's the two areas that we're primarily watching here for Sunday on the second. As we extend into the 3rd of July here, a lot of folks have uh, some fireworks going on on this particular day. And we can see for a lot of the southern plains into the deeper south in the southeast, there's some scattered thunderstorms. It becomes a little bit more widespread here for the Ohio Valley into the northeast. And that's only kind of West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and uh, Ohio there for the Ohio Valley. But the, the kind of the western side of things look a lot nicer there in the Ohio Valley. It really depends what you consider to be. The Ohio Valley, of course. Now, as we move into July 4th, I need to remind you guys that prestige weather, we're going to be doing a lot here for planning on July 4th for anybody that has plans, for anybody that has fireworks, for anybody that might be hosting an event, especially, I would say it would be useful. Be sure to check it out. At least give it a chance. It's $5 a month, like I mentioned earlier on in the video. And we're going to be doing a lot of calls, a lot of forecasts, particularly pertaining to the 4th of July. And we're going to be doing that for holidays and just all sorts of stuff like that through the year so you're gonna really really want to take part in that again it's five dollars a month very affordable and we're going to be trying to give you guys as many one-on-one -on -one resources as humanly possible uh, we were just talking today we had a kind of meeting about the business we have not even received a single negative take about the business at all let alone a negative review we haven't even heard anything negative about it at all uh, it has all been positive and it just makes me so happy to be able to bring value uh, to be compensated for that value, of course, is nice, but just to know that we are giving great value and people like that, it makes you feel so much better about a business. It's very validating, and I'm, I couldn't be more happy about how that business is growing and going. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and it, it definitely would be worth checking out in the pinned comment and description. As we move on towards the 5th, which will be Wednesday here, we can see the upper Midwest has a storm system beginning here, uh, and then we also see the Southeast dealing with kind of the summertime thunderstorms ongoing that are pretty typical in the summertime for those areas. Thursday the 6th, we could see that if you kind of were to draw a line here over the eastern third of Canada and the United States, that is where a lot of the thunderstorm activity is located. And then things are pretty sparse for the western two-thirds, uh, very dry compared to the rest of the United States there. The 7th is the same story. We see a bit of a frontal boundary perhaps taking place, and this is going to be what kind of separates the stormy weather from the very dry weather out here, very dry, and then uh, this storm line kind of rolling through here for the eastern half of North America. Saturday the 8th, that extends even further eastward, now along the coast here, as you can see, dealing with those thunderstorms, so definitely bringing impacts to many different folks. And then finally, as we reach the 9th, we begin to finally get another storm system here for the central United States, perhaps our next severe weather event as well, and this will bring the activity back sort of from coast to coast, as you can see, as there is some precipitation here in the Northwest. So a lot more impacts on the way later on, but we're gonna have to talk about that at a later date because it is 10 days out. So there is some uncertainty, of course, with all of that. Now, as we take a look at the total precipitation, we can see that there is very high amounts here for mostly the Eastern third, as we were talking about, but as you extend into the Northern Plains, the upper Midwest, there is kind of this extension here of that high amounts of precipitation that works its way across. We can tell that a lot of the storminess is gonna be making a flow like this, uh, kind of working around this higher pressure in here that's gonna be blocking most of this from this area at least. That is the trend. And then the pipeline is basically just cut off from the west. Most of this is coming from Canada down, dipping in. So that is the pattern we're kind of finding ourselves in. A lot more La Nina-like, which is kind of interesting considering we're in an El Nino. This is highly susceptible to what you would expect to see from a La Nina. Uh, pretty interesting, just goes to show that Enso isn't completely everything. So El Nino, La Nina doesn't dictate literally everything. Uh, and you can find yourself in some different patterns along the way. It's kind of just a long-term trend. That's kind of just a weather wisdom uh, segment right there. As we work into the temperatures, we could see that we are going to be building into a positive PNA. We've been talking about this for a little bit, and this is what it is: is it's basically this positive temperatures. You can see that 
in the Pacific North American area. That's what PNA stands for, Pacific North American Oscillation. Uh, so it really should be PNAO, but whatever. So we see some colder air diving southward as a result of this, and this is going to cause colder air to become a little bit more of a trend in the east. As you can see, that really builds in, and we begin to get back into this kind of historically cold pattern pretty quickly. So we're warming up briefly, but as we're approaching the 10th, we can see really, really cold air mass diving southward for a lot of the eastern two-thirds here. So definitely... Uh, a lot of what we've been dealing with over the course of June. And I would say the one area that just remains cooler than normal all the way through the 15th here on the model is this Northeast and Mid-Atlantic corridor, which is the primary area that we've been focusing on for the coldest of the temperatures here in the United States. Crazy to see this trending all the way towards the midpoint of the summertime. Definitely going to have to see how that continues late July into August. And I mean, we might go down as a very, very cold historic summer for these areas particularly. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it gives you guys some insight into July. Again, official July forecast releasing tomorrow. We do have our first winter forecast releasing early on prestige weather very, very soon over the next couple of days. And then it will be officially releasing on the YouTube channel in about a week or a little bit more. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. The second fall forecast is already in prestige weather that you guys can check out if you've joined or if you're thinking about joining, you can join today and check that out. Uh, but that will be released on the channel in about a week. So we have a lot of exciting things upcoming. Be sure to subscribe so you see all of those things. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.